Hello and welcome to another review. This time we are taking a look at the Stardew Valley, developed by Concern Ape and published by Chucklefish. And uh, Stardew Valley is very much uh, kind of farming life simulator that encompasses pretty much everything from fishing, farming, uh, livestock, co some combat and mining, and getting a family built uh, together, having children, making great house and everything. It's basically a life simulator when you're living in the, in the farming community. And it's, it's very, very similar to all the Harvest Moon games, especially like the, uh, graphically especially like the SNES version, which was the one I, I played uh, way too much when I was younger. And uh, it de definitely does bring a lot of memories into my mind from those days. Very, <laughs> very many. But anyways, let's... Uh, jump into a new game. I'll show a, a bit of, from the start of the game. Uh, I'll skip the tutorial part and uh, we'll uh, load up uh, my other save and sh show a couple of the more advanced things. But anyways, let's uh, jump in here and uh, skip the intro and we'll just go Bellamar on the review farm games. It's my favorite thing. So this is the character creation. There's a uh, quite a lot of skin color options, hair options, of course both genders as well. So let's just pick random there. There's a uh, a lot of shirt options <laughs> what I found yesterday, which you can change. We'll just go with the. Uh, that looks pretty nice and uh, not not really a farmer shirt. Let's get the one of the overalls. That's, uh, that's good enough. That's good enough. And then there's accessories, which is uh, mainly headgear. And we'll just, uh, I don't know, get some classes. We're, we're a nerdy boy who starts a uh, farming life. <laughs> good school, co school bo boy with our hair and everything. And uh, you can pick, pick your animal preference, which is basically cat or dog. And maybe some more currently. There's space there. I'm, I'm hoping there's gonna be some future content for the game. And I'm so happy this game uh, released uh, as a full game, not an early access or anything. Often uh, these uh, kind of games uh, kind of push them out themselves uh, into an early access and then it takes a couple of years for them to get there where you want them to be. This one, right out of the gate, full, fully done. Except the multiplayer part, which is in the works. Uh, I think it was supposed to say be a uh, four-player uh, co-op mode and I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well then you can do some hair color changes well ooh, we could be a ooh, granddad of the farm yes yes I color well it doesn't matter really since we mm -hmm. cannot see the eyes just go with actually let's go with red eyes yeah. and then uh, cat or dog I'm gonna pick the tank uh, cat this option uh, eventually in the game you get a pet, which is a uh, cat or the dog you see here, and uh, it's it's very much just a cosmetic thing in your farm, so it doesn't really matter which you pick. So just what is your preference? And pants color, uh, it's fine. I'll I'll go with the blue. So here we go. And uh, since we did skip the tutorial, we didn't see uh, all the information there. You basically work at this. Uh, Dead end job at this dead end company called Joja as a programmer, I think. And then uh, you decide uh, after you receive a letter from your granddad about the farm in the Stardew Valley that I I I'm done with this bullshit corporate life and I'm gonna go and start the farm. So, this is your cabin where you sleep. Let me enable the outer run uh, here. Uh, rather run around and this is your cabin where you live and sleep you can sleep in your bed you can watch your TV here there's a couple of different channels the weather report tells you uh, we can click on it of course and uh, this just uh, tells you what's the weather forecast for tomorrow so for example if it's gonna rain or whatever tomorrow it also tells you about uh, different events throughout the week uh, for example there's a flower festival there's a egg hunt during the first month 
uh, of the gameplay, and it tells you that it's gonna be tomorrow, so you don't miss out on those uh, important events. And then there's also a fortune teller, which tells you uh, about the spirits in Stardew Valley, and if they're happy or not, and will affect your fortune. I don't exactly know how this affects, but I think you might do like a fishing luck, uh, what you get when you farm, uh, like a quality of crops, and when you mine, how much materials you get. I think it is uh, affecting that, but I'm not 100% sure. And then you also have a Gleaming of the Land, which is basically a tip channel about the game. Like, this uh, tells you things you should do. So there is a chop the wood and search a wild forest to earn some cash while waiting for your first harvest. So it's kind of like a tutorial in kind of TV channel form. It also tells you, like, uh, later in this uh, first season, there's these uh, uh, salmon berries growing outside in the wild and some spring onions, and it tells you basically, go here and there's gonna be spring onions or uh, berries to pick up for free money, basically. <laughs> or uh, for uh, energy, which I will explain in a moment. And then there's a, a third channel, uh, sorry, fourth channel, which uh, doesn't actually show up at the moment. It comes uh, on every now and then, and also it does reruns. It's a cooking channel. So there's cooking in the game, and uh, you can watch the cooking show on TV, <clears throat> and uh, you will learn cooking recipes from watching the TV, which is pretty awesome. You can also buy uh, those recipes from from the town, and uh, there's probably other ways as well to learn all kinds of uh, cooking recipes. Although, at the moment, uh, the house doesn't have a kitchen, which is kind of strange for a house to not have a kitchen. But... Anyways, uh, you need a kitchen uh, and a well, place to prepare the food. And, uh, in, uh, they give a lot of energy and heal you and all kinds of stuff, so it's uh, pretty nice to have those. Just eating crops as well is uh, very, very good uh, for your energy. So the energy bar is here, and that's affecting how much you can do things uh, per day. And we got some parsnip sheet seeds uh, to start the game. And we have a journal here, which uh, basically is a kind of quest log or kind of pointers what to do and where to go next, like this tells you to harvest and cultivate your parsnips, and then introductions, go go meet everyone in town. Basically to get to know the, know the people. You can actually see all the people here, this is the social social tab. There is few people who are not on the social tab here, but mostly all of them are here, the 28 people. So we've met uh, Robin, and we've met Louis, who is the... Louis is the mayor of the town, and Robin is one of the ladies living in the town who... Uh, works as a carpenter and can upgrade your house and build your chicken coops and cow barns and all that silos. So basically here's all the all the people living in the in the village. You don't know their name until you meet them. There's the relationship meter here and as you can marry them and get to know them and socialize and make friends. And there's also the gift uh, option here. So you can gift uh, items to them twice per week. Once per day, twice per week. And uh, it will uh, make them happier or sadder if you give them not, something not, not so nice. And well, but the goal, the goal is to make uh, make everyone kind of like you in the city, in the village, and eventually pick up one of these ladies. It, it, it will tell if they are single or not. This one, well, doesn't have the single, so Robin is not single, and uh, Louis not is not single. And but there is uh, there is multiple ladies and and boys to meet in, in the town, and the game doesn't uh, really tell you which one to pick or uh, which gender to pick. If you like, whoever, you can just uh, get to know with him and her and go from there. It also has a, a skill system, it's kind of like a uh, just an experience on doing things. You unlock new uh, recipes and crafting options and proficiencies as you go with these. So just doing farming, doing mining, foraging, fishing, combat, all of these just increase the uh, skill and also give you so more options to build and more options to do in general in the game. And this is where the crafting tab is. At the moment we can only make few very basic things like a chest and uh, wooden fences and gates, some torches which are really important in the mines because it's, it gets really dark. There are some decor uh, path options which also will prevent uh, just random uh, plants growing in your farm, so it makes the place look nice and also kind of serves as a purpose to prevent uh, 
useless stuff from growing in your way. And also a campfire for a bit of light. Then you have a collection system. So there's a lot of collectibles in the game. There is actually an achievement uh, down here to uh, ship every item and there also collect every item as well. And there's a couple other things in the game which I won't spoil, but there's a kind of collection thingy uh, going on multiple fronts in this game, which will reward you from doing different collections and collecting different items into different places. And it's a, it's a really kind of compelling, appealing thing to do, at least for me. Uh, but let's let's, uh, let's let's go out. So this is uh, all the all the stuff. Here's my inventory as well. So we have uh, currently all the tools, axe, hoe. Watering can, pickaxe, scythe, you can get weapons, and you can upgrade these tools later on as well. Our seeds, and you can improve your inventory space. So currently we have this tab only open, which kind of like the tool, toolbar down here, or up here, it kind of swaps around based on where you are. And you can upgrade your backpack with uh, two more rows with money. And there's also inventory or uh, equipment here, so you can get hats and uh, some rings and boots, uh, which will give you different stats and different uh, bonuses and things uh yeah also up here time of the day so it shows the time of the day here shows the time here my money the log day and the uh, weather and because this is the spirits but out we go so here my farm is uh, in a pretty rough state uh, as a uh, it's been uh, left uh, just to overgrow for years and years. Who knows how long this has been. This was the grandpa's old farm, and he's not been here for years. So, it's in a bit, bit rough shape. So firstly you want to just uh, make some space for yourself here, so you can start uh, the first parsnip sheet farm. And chop down a few trees here. And this is pretty much what you do especially in the mornings, especially when you get farming going. You just spend uh, time uh, watering them, picking up all the already grown uh, plants and fruits and whatever you're doing, feeding your chickens and cows and uh, animals, and uh, then selling all of them. Selling happens with this uh, box here. You can click on the box and you can throw items in there, like I could sell the sap here, uh, which we'll do right now. And I'm going to sell some of these things. So you can just throw things into the box and uh, sell them. You can also just uh, pick the item here and throw it there. You don't have to open the box, which is a really great uh, small thing, but makes life so much easier. So I'll just clear out some space here for my farm. We don't need much. And we don't have any energy anyway, so to do all, all the things today. Energy management is uh, quite key in the game and you kind of have to decide what you want to do for that day with your energy. But it's, it's not uh, as uh, demanding as uh, uh, South Harvest Moon games where with the energy you can you can do much more each day. So let's uh, hold the land, so we need a 3x5 for the seeds, so we can plant the Seeds. I also have a couple of these mixed seeds, which I got from the plants uh, when I was uh, just uh, picking them up. So I'm gonna do uh, another one here. But the mixed seeds uh, are just random seeds uh, during that season that grow, I think. And you get flowers, you get uh, some of these parsnips and uh, whatever you grow during a uh, spring season, just randomly from these. So these are uh, really nice to also get. Basically some extra money, but random. Also. Uh, uh, growing flowers and stuff like that uh, is a really good way to uh, give the, those to the potential girlfriends and boyfriends and friends. So it's always nice to get some of those. They also grow around uh, around the map here. So this is the map for the game. There's the city here, there's the review farm and there's some other areas like the beach here. There's, some, uh, there's the mine up here and the mountains and different things. There's the bus. We came through the bus. Uh, on the bus uh, through the here, so they grow around there and exploring around uh, every day also is kind of important. You can use the pond uh, to refill your can, but this is now fully watered. You need to water the plants every day, but there are different ways of uh, making that uh, 
can automate it. There's sprinklers, there's water retaining soil where the water will stay or potentially stay. So you don't have to spend as much energy every day to do things. I'm almost out of energy already and uh, I've just done a bit of clearing, a bit of uh, watering and that's it. So you have to plan kind of on the energy management. But you can use, uh, if you have uh, excess food or if you can cook, you can make uh, things that give you energy, which is really nice. So let's go out on a walk, check out a few things. Here's the bus, you came in. And usually there's some things growing in here, like berries in these bushes and, or flowers and things. And this is uh, where the city is. Or, I guess, a village or a town, whatever it is. And there's different houses here where people live. There's a pharmacy store here where you can buy different things. You can talk to the people to meet them. This, uh, this guy is Har Harvey, and he's the local doctor. Works at the pharmacy there. This is uh, Marnie. Uh, she sells the cows and chickens. And there's Pierre's general store, Abigail. There's Pierre selling uh, all kinds of seeds. So if you want to get some more uh, seeds here, which we probably should uh, early in the game, we could get like a bean starter or things like that. Or just a ton of potatoes. Let's just get the uh, cauliflower as well. Just uh, spend all my money on cauliflowers. Let's go big at the cauliflower business in the middle. This is the notice port, and this is a very important thing. So, here you can see uh, the spring, year one, the month, it's 28 days, so four weeks. And you can see current date, you can see everyone's birthday, so if you're making a moves on, on a lady or, or, a, or a boy, it's very important to remember their birthdays and uh, give them uh, gifts during those days. Or if you're just making friends uh, with someone like Louis, who is the mayor, just give, give him a present during, a nice present during a birthday and that's gonna boost your friendship by a ton. It's also showing you the festivals of talking, so there's a egg festival on, on Saturday and then a flower dance later, later in the month. And these are special events and they usually waste your whole day except the morning. It usually starts like a, say 9pm, uh, sorry, no, 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 not 9pm, 9am in the morning, so you have a like three hours in the morning to water your plants and feed your chickens and get your uh, produce into the box to sell them and then you go to some egg festival and it's pretty much the whole day. But they're really, really cool, these uh, special events that happen during different uh, times. There's also different cutscenes and events that happen other days as well when you go around. So there's uh, all kinds of happenings in the town. And keeping an eye on this and remembering when things happen is very important. There's also another board here which I can do at the moment, it's uh, around this area, uh, which uh, gives you random quests. So some of the villagers ask you for uh, different things and uh, if you give them to them, uh, they uh, pay, you for mo uh, pay money for you or different things and uh, also uh, it boosts their happiness towards you quite a lot when you fulfill their tasks. So there are also something to keep an eye open. Uh, sometimes you also get a uh, mail for those quests. They ask for like, can you farm this thing for me or this thing and then you get that. Uh, this is the saloon where uh, usually, especially in the evening time, there's a lot of people hanging around here. So if you're trying to meet someone, saloon is uh, usually the time to do it in the evening. But you can also buy some food here. As you can see, for example, the beer here. It's an artisan boost. Drink in moderation. It gives you energy and it gives you health. So this is how you can boost your uh, productivity each day if you make uh, foods or just buy the food. They are pretty damn expensive, I would say though. Easier to grow with and make it yourself. But salad here, 113 energy just from salad is pretty damn nice. And you can keep working on things uh, throughout the day. You can really burn your energy like in you wake up around 6 and around 11 it's very easy to have like zero energy already and you still have another 10 hours of the day easily to work with so you, you really should uh, probably get some food. Just uh, push through the day and get most out of the time. Time management is important, definitely. The more you get done each day the better as you can earn more money and get more stuff done before you get overwhelmed by all the options you get. But 
The game is also kind of relaxed and doesn't really force you that you need to do this and this and this by this date. You can just go with the flow and do the do it you know your own time. And there's always next year. <laughs> if you miss out something this year, just go for the next year. The game has pretty long duration, which is awesome. Uh, I played yesterday about eight hours, and I got. Uh, I'm not at the end of the first month. And there's the first season, and there's four uh, four seasons, and I know the game has is at least three years long. So that's quite many hours. <laughs> Especially uh, because I slept for a few days and didn't really use them fully. So that means uh, if I've really utilized all of the days, that's a lot of hours to game of gameplay this is to offer. So here is the recipes I was telling as well. So you, when you get the kitchen done, you can make your own pizzas, which are pretty damn nice for energy. And all these other tortilla spreads and whatever. And you can get other recipes as well. Also, you, you saw the coffee here. Uh, it also gives uh, some other buffs like speed, so you can run around quicker. Let's go explore a bit more of the town. There's a uh, arcade machines here. You can actually play the arcade here. Journey of the Prairie King. <laughs> so there's a uh, actually mini games here that you can play. And I don't know if uh, you actually do get anything out of these mini games. But I'm just gonna kill myself and get out of here. I got into a boss in this, but I didn't uh, kill the boss. I died uh, on it. So I, I kind of hope there's something you can gain out of this as well. It's just not pointless as uh, a mini game. I was trying to impress the ladies uh, with my video gaming skills. It didn't work out. Let's let's quit and let's get out of here. <laughs> Some stray doggy here. I think that's the doggy we'll get eventually. There are some trailer people living in here. Some more houses. Abigail on the bridge. All these people. Ooh, look at that. It's probably fishing there. Uh, all these people have kind of their daily routine. They go to work, they go around, they go to the saloon, they go home uh, in the evening. And you're gonna find them doing things uh, around in the map here. There's the old community center, Pelican Town. Community center, and up here is uh, the Carpenters. Uh, the mine and all the things. So this is the carpenter's house here. And here you can buy your house upgrades. So you want to upgrade your house with the kitchen. It's quite expensive and takes quite a lot of wood. So there's some work involved on that. And you can also construct uh, different things like uh, the coop, the barn, well, the silo, stable, slime hutch. And there's also upgraded versions of these. And I think you can also uh, have multiples of these. And uh, they are not predetermined. You don't have to build them exactly in this location, in the map, in, in your uh, farm area. You can actually choose where you put them down, which is really awesome. Like in uh, some older Harvest Moons and uh, some other similar games, they are usually predetermined. Like, this is where you have this kind of ruined uh, building and this is where your chicken coop will be. But no, this uh, allows uh, a lot of freedom and choice uh, on those. Let's go back to back to my home here. Let's start the back. Yeah, let's take the back road. It's a shortcut uh, in the back here. I don't remember to use often enough, especially when I come here. Uh, because this is where the mine uh, the mine is in here. We cannot access that yet in this because it needs to be opened. Um, but a really quick way to get to the mine is here. I usually go through the town and w waste too much time doing that. I should uh, learn to use this back road more. There's the bus, uh, bus route, and we're back, back home. You have a cave here in, in your own farm as well, where uh, there's nothing at the moment. But you're gonna farm uh, mushrooms in there eventually. Which is cool. There are some ruined buildings. I don't know the purpose of this ruined building, but I know it, it's not where the barn and uh, the chicken coop comes because uh, I've built them here previously and seen them in different places on other people's maps. And back to the farm. And now we're gonna continue. Spending our uh, rest of our energy to get the cauliflower is growing. And there we go. Just water them as well. And there we go. That's our 
first day. I'm gonna go to sleep, which uh, saves the game and also progresses the time for you. It's a bit early for a for a nap, and you also get the uh, the money from the things you sold uh, in the box uh, at the end of the day, which we threw in the box. So this is how you earn um, most of your money. You just uh, throw the box money, uh, throw the money, no, no, throw the produce into the box, and at the end of the day, you can get it, get it again. Get the money from that. You can also sell them directly into the shops, and sometimes that might be more valuable, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So here's the TV again with a report for the next day. It's gonna be rain all day next uh, next day, and uh, there's the mail. You need to fall water again, and this is how the game basically runs from day to day. Let's uh, exit out of this. Something to desktop. Huh. Well, let me exit to desktop and we'll load up the game again. I'll show you the game from the other save file. Sorry for it being totally dark for a second there. So there's the Chucklefish and Concerned Ape. The developers, uh, the developer and uh, the publisher Chucklefish. So you can have multiple farms uh, going at the moment, here's the star dude farm we are going a bit later in the day, I have a hat and all kinds of stuff. This is uh, the one I'm actually playing on, on stream at the moment. So here's still still small, small house, I made some road, there's my crappy farm, I'm waiting for the autumn season to start and start a new farming, there's my, oh the, chick the chicken saved my grass there, that's my doggy. That's my chicken coop, and I've cleared out some uh, space here. But I wanted to show you guys uh, uh, some of the combat and stuff. I have a fishing rod as well, so you can do fishing. Oh, do I have my sword? Yes. I have some inventory. Expansion already as well. Here's my straw hat and my leather boots. And uh, some of the flowers you can pick up and grow. And this is a quality star, so they're worth more. And I think they also make people happier when you give them really pretty flowers. And I still didn't take the, the damn uh, shortcut as I was going to do. So let's just go through here. Through the village. Like the community center here. Uh, one of the collection things uh, I was talking about happens in the... Uh, community center, but I don't want to spoil too much about it, it's a part of the storyline of the game. And the other thing is uh, there's a museum uh, down here, uh, here, the Stardew Valley uh, Museum and Library, where you can donate uh, things you get out of the geodes and uh, all kinds of minerals and things you find. And uh, Gunther who runs the museum gives you different rewards uh, based on that. So this is where the mines are where you can do combat. So, the mine has a, a shaft going down, so there's levels, one from from one till a lot levels, and also there's an elevator you can use to instantly skip to uh, different levels. Every five levels has an elevator exit, and they unlock as you go down. Let's just go hop in here. And these seem to be kind of randomly generated, I'm not 100% sure on that. Some of them seem to be, and some of them not, and uh, you can just do some mining here for stone and other stuff. You get some geodes, this is where you get uh, lots of the charcoal, or not charcoal, but coal and uh, iron and copper and all the minerals. And you have to break rocks until you find an exit. Sometimes killing an enemy also spawns an exit. And uh, you just go down, mining some things, there's uh, some copper here. See if I can find a monster or two. Let's keep going down. There's also boxes and different things that can contain stuff. Oh, a bug. So this is very Legend of Zelda-like uh, from, say, uh, SNES times, where you swing your sword at the enemies. This is uh, just a very simple bug. It flies around and you get some bug meat out of those. There's also these uh, collectible things here, like the earth crystals. There are minerals that are used for some crafting stuff, and these are the things you can actually donate to the uh, museum as well, if you don't know, haven't done yet done. 
And now we're down five levels, there's an elevator. And some slimes as well. Yeah, you slime. Green algae. And this is how the combat system works in the game. It's fairly simple. You just uh, swing around your sword. And uh, there's a bunch of different ones. Different uh, kinds of weapons as well. And you also have a slingshot, which you can use to shoot, uh, shoot rocks. Which kind of works like this. You just aim with this and shoot a rock over there. Let's see if we can find a monster to shoot a rock at. So there's uh, some ranged weapons as well. I don't know if uh, later on you get more if more efficient than better better ones, but this works for now. Uh, I haven't really needed uh, the slingshot that much, to be honest. I've, I've just used uh, the sword uh, always. Let's get the leave the mine and we go down with the elevator. Say like 20, 30 levels. Maybe not that much. <laughs> Actually, let's go 20 levels. There's also a cave fishing option here, so you can do some fishing on different fishing areas do give a different uh, Different stuff actually since we are here we should probably show the fishing as well I'm, I'm sure you guys are interested in seeing the fishing in this game, which is a uh, surprisingly hard And I only have this uh, first uh, fishing rod so far so you cast your Fishing rod into there, and you wait for uh, something to catch on, and you have to click it. There, I found a white algae. Uh, the distance you throw it affects what you get. So closer to shore, you get uh, different things, and further in the water, you get different things. Also, depth, uh, time of day, the location, how spirits like you, if you have bait or not. There's a lot of things that affect the fishing, and there's. Lots of stuff you can get out of the fishing. I wonder if this gives only algae, or is there actually some cave fish as well? What is this? Soggy newspaper. Nice. Come on, can we get a fish so I can show you how a fish works? I think this place might not be the best for a fishing. That was quick. Of course, no fish when I try to show you the things. Let's try this one and go outside where there is actually fish in the river. That's a good way to get white algae though, which is a, a good uh, energy food. Well, not, not, not that good, but... Still gives you a... Uh, gives you some. So here, uh, this is a much better. We'll just cast this in, into there. That's also Linus. Oh. See? <laughs> Immediate fish. I wasn't prepared. Uh, there's Linus down there, the town hobo who lives in a tent up the cliff there and rummages the bins in town. <laughs> Seems to be algae day today. Just green and white algae. You can also get some. Uh, Broken CDs and old boots and all kinds of trash. These guys don't respect the nature. They just uh, throw their garbage in the waters around Stardew Valley. There we go. So this is the fishing system. Uh, you see the fish there and the green bar. I'm supposed to have the green bar uh, below the fish. And uh, fill the bar. And sometimes this is really hard. And I got a carp. Nice. 22 inch carp. And a treasure. Three geodes. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So anyways, this is... This is Stardew Valley. It's pretty much... A PC Harvest Moon. Is what is the good description. For the game. It took a... Took a lot of uh, inspiration from that. Lots of mechanics. It's also taken some uh, other inspirations from different games. The inverter system is very, let's say, Terraria or Starbound-like, and uh, some other things. Just collected uh, all the good things about those games, threw, threw in some new things, and made this amazing, amazing PC version of the game. I've been waiting for a Harvest Moon-like game to come out on PC, a good one to come out on, on a PC, for probably like 15 years. <laughs> and I, I think that day is finally here, 
today. And I, I'm in absolutely in love with this game. It's so amazing, and I'm having so much fun. So if you like this kind of games, like a like me, I highly recommend picking this up. It's very very decently priced on Steam as well. A really really nice app, and uh, highly recommended for everyone who likes building games and kind of simulation management life life games. Where you can meet, start your family, do your farm, and do do your own thing. Just sit back, relax, and do some fishing, or farming, or mining. Whatever, whatever is your thing, do do your thing. But anyways, that's it for me this time. Thank you, thank you for watching this review of Starry Valley, like on Saturday, and uh, published by Chucklefish. And uh, check out the Steam group uh, for more building management strategy games, and also the YouTube for different reviews of the same genres and couple other games every now and then. And also, I do live streams on twitch.tv slash every day. This game is definitely gonna be one of those, and some other same kind of games, and strategy and building and all that. And of course on the YouTube as well, there's gonna be a series of different things, let's plays, reviews, guides for games, so take a look at those as well. But anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.